Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to sketch the graphs with some basic functions. We'll be revising some old graphs we already know how to draw, as well as learning some new ones. As you've probably figured out by this point in your maths career, graphs are pretty important. And that's not just bar graphs and pie charts, but all types of graphs are useful for a load of different things. Today we'll be learning how to sketch a few of them. To start with, we'll recap the graphs of constant functions. Then we'll move on to straight lines. After that, we'll be looking at how to sketch a simple cubic or quartic function. Today, we'll just be looking at their general shape, so don't panic. The last graph we'll look at is y equals root x, and then we'll wrap up with a summary. So graphs of a constant function. That's like y equals 2, or y equals negative 3, or y equals 1635. Whatever number it is, y takes that value no matter what x is. So it's going to be a horizontal straight line. A graph of a constant is constantly flat. We can also think of this as sketching the graph of y equals f of x, where f of x equals some number, let's say 2. It's a function that takes in any value of x and always spits out the same value of f of x. So for f of x equals 2, the domain is all real x, x can be whatever the hell it likes, and the range is simply that y equals 2. y can only ever be 2, no matter what x is. Alternatively, a vertical line has the equation x equals some number, like a half. But because this one doesn't pass the vertical line test, it's not actually a function of x. Now straight lines are not much of a step up. If a straight line is in the form y equals mx plus b, then m is the gradient and b is the y-intercept. For example, y equals 3x plus 2 has a gradient of 3, so remembering gradient is rise over run, this means it moves up 3 every time it moves along 1, and a y-intercept of 2 means it crosses the y-axis at y equals 2. If m is 0, then the mx term disappears, and you're just left with y equals b, the graph of a constant function, like before, which of course has a gradient of 0 because it's a horizontal line. Also watch out for if m is negative. If this is the case, the line will slope from the top left to the bottom right. For example, given y equals negative 3x plus 2 has a gradient of minus 3, the graph will move down 3 spots every time it moves along 1x value. Now if you're asked to sketch a graph, it doesn't have to be exactly to scale, but you do need to label some key points. So with a straight line, you should find where it crosses the y-axis by setting x equals 0 and solving for y, and where it crosses the x-axis by setting y equals 0 and solving for x. Make sure to always remember to label the intercepts, and that goes for every curve you ever sketch. Next, draw a line that goes through these points and extends in either direction, and that's your graph. y equals x plus 1 would cross the y-axis at y equals 1, and the x-axis at negative 1, so it would look like this. Straight lines, as long as they're not vertical, are all graphs of functions of x, so it makes sense to talk about the domain and range. So we have a line, and let's assume it's not flat, because we already talked about them. If it's not flat, then it's going to reach every single y-value eventually. I mean, you'll probably be waiting for a while if the slope is tiny, but that doesn't really matter, because the line goes on forever. So the domain is all real x, and the range is also all real y. Now let's look at some more complex polynomials, cubics and quartics. A polynomial is just a bunch of powers of x added together, like x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2. So that includes quadratics which go up to an x squared term, cubics with an x cubed term, and quartics with an x to the 4 term. You can remember that quartics have an x to the 4 term because it sounds like quarter, which is 1 over 4. The highest power of x in a polynomial is called the degree, so quadratics have a degree of 2, cubics a degree of 3, and so on. Today we'll be learning to sketch a simple cubic and a simple quartic. The simplest cubic is just y equals x cubed, which looks like this and intercepts the x and y axis at 0, 0. When x is very big and negative, then y is also very big and negative, because cubing a negative number gives you a negative number. And when x is very big and positive, then y is also very big and positive, because cubing a positive number gives you a positive number. Making the number in front of x cubed bigger has an effect of making the graph slightly steeper. For example, the graphs of y equals 2x cubed or y equals 3x cubed look similar, but clearly steepen. To confirm this, look at the y value of y equals x cubed versus y equals 3x cubed at x equals 1. y equals 3x cubed has a higher y value of 3, making it steeper. In fact, this is probably a good point, pardon the pun, to give you an important tip. If your exams ask you to sketch or plot a curve, it's always a good idea to label one point that isn't the intercepts, which of course you're going to be labelling already. It makes it clearer to the examiner that you know what's going on, 
and sometimes this is even in the criteria. What happens if we make the number in front of x cubed negative? y equals negative x cubed looks like this. It's been flipped around the x-axis. The general rule is, if you multiply a function by negative 1, it's going to flip around the x-axis, because we've changed all the positive function values to negative function values, and all the negative values to positive. But we'll look at that more in our video later on transformations. Cubics work just the same as straight lines in terms of domain and range. Any x value can slot into the function and be cubed, and any value of f of x can be achieved with a suitable x, so the domain and range are both all the real numbers. Quartics, on the other hand, look more like this. Here we've got y equals x to the power of 4, and you can see that when x is big and negative, y is big and positive, and when x is big and positive, y is also big and positive. That's because x to the 4 is the square of x squared, so it's definitely going to be positive. They have a similar shape to quadratics, but the only real difference is they're flatter at the base, specifically between x equals 1 and negative 1. And obviously their intercept is 0, 0. And just like quadratics, the negative version is flipped like this. In terms of domain and range, the domain is going to be all real x values again, because any x value works. That's actually a general thing for any polynomial, because you're not doing any crazy things like dividing by 0. For the range, you're going to have a minimum or maximum value, so for example, the range of f of x equals negative x to the power of 4 is all y's less than or equal to 0. Of course, cubics and quartics don't necessarily have just one term. A cubic might look like this, or this. And when there are multiple terms like this, you'll get some lumps and bumps along the way. But the overall shape is going to be the same. And we'll iron out the lumps and bumps in another video, so don't worry about them for now. Before we finish, we'll quickly look at y equals root x. So although everybody seems to panic whenever a square root pops up, sketching them is actually pretty easy. Let's quickly consider the sideways parabola x equals y squared, which is the same as y equals x squared, but just facing to the right. If we take the square root of this function, we're left with y equals plus or minus root x, and eureka! This is the exact same as the function y equals root x, save for one key detail. The plus or minus sign means we have to sketch both y equals positive root x and y equals negative root x. So when we are asked to sketch just y equals root x, we only sketch the positive or top half of the graph. And after we sketch it, as usual, remember to label a point, say, when x equals 4, y equals root 4, which is 2, and of course the intercept of 0, 0. Now the domain and range for this one is slightly more interesting. As we know, we can never take the square root of a negative number. This means that the domain of x is all positive numbers, x greater than or equal to 0. Similarly, if our function is taking the square root of positive numbers, we're never going to have the function output any negative numbers, because the square root of a positive number is still going to be positive. So the range of f of x is also y is greater than or equal to 0. You can see this looking at the graph, where the function only exists for positive x and y values. OK, let's wrap it up there for today. Firstly, we revise the graphs of constant functions. Graphs of y equals some constant c are flat, and graphs of x equals some constant c are vertical. Straight lines given by y equals mx plus b have a gradient of m and a y-intercept of b. To sketch the line, we find and label the x and y-intercepts and join these with a straight line. Then we had a look at some polynomials. Simple cubics and quartics have these shapes, with their negative versions just flipped around the x-axis. Finally, we checked out y equals root x, which looks like half of a parabola, heading upwards to the right. I've labelled the domains and ranges of each of these functions on the graphs so you can practice identifying these. And always remember to label the intercepts and one other point. And that's it for today. Join me next time for more graphs.